Welcome to Touch by Prayer. I am so, I'm uber excited. I mean, I get excited, but this is like uber excitement because who do I have as my guest? Seriously? Taryn Wilson? Seriously? The man who created Finger of God, Furious Love, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Reborn, and has written books? Who has changed my life with one film and has changed countless of lives with the things that he does, how he speaks, how he encourages, and how he brings God into homes throughout the world. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Darren Wilson. Darren, thank you. It is such an honor to have you here on Touch by Prayer. Thank you. It's good to be here. Oh my gosh. This is like... This is, it's like Christmas for me. <laughs> I, I just got like Darren Wilson as like a present. I oh, am just awesome. so excited. Okay, so where to begin is you, you have done so much and you have seen so much of, of how God moves. But yeah. what's so beautiful is you've gotten to see God move through different people, but with the same spirit. Right. And I think that that you have gotten to see that I always think that that God is like a diamond. And I think that you have actually seen more facets, I think, than a lot of people. Oh, I hope so. I yeah. Hope so. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, so let's let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Let's go back to your journey into making films, which was always something that was a desire of your heart. Correct. Well, OK, no. Uh, tell <laughs> stories. stories was a desire of my heart. Okay. Christian movies was never something that I wanted to do. Okay. All right. So and Christian movies, no way in the world that I want to make those. That is so funny. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we go back yeah. into how God brought you because you were a, a professor at a yes. university yes. and he took you from one kind of a classroom to a different kind Pretty of classroom. Much, yeah. yeah. So basically, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the short version. So basically, sure. um, you know, at 13 years old, uh, that's the first time I ever heard the voice of the Lord. I heard him tell me that I was supposed to, I was to be a writer. And so uh, my, I, my father was an artist, so I knew the only way to make it as an, as an actual artist was to like work harder than everybody else. So for the next 17 years, I just tried to outwork everybody. I wrote more than anybody ever knew. And, uh, and I failed at everything that I ever tried to do. Miserably. I failed miserably. And, uh, so, and so I became a, a college professor when I was 23 years old up in uh, Chicago, the Chicago area. And uh, I basically was doing that, and I, I really enjoyed it, but like I was trying to make it as a creative person. And uh, around 30 years old, my family kind of, I guess you could put it, they forced me to go to... Uh, a church service in Toronto, uh, like a conference. And uh, while I was there, I had a radical, radical encounter with God. And I, for the first time in my life, I, I, I experienced the Father's heart, which was, which was really new to me because I was very skeptical. I kind of, at that point in my life, I grew up in the church and I was very, I didn't like God very much. I hated Christians. Um, and uh, I was very bored and annoyed by church. And uh, so the, when the Lord kind of gave me this idea to make a film about miracles that I wasn't even sure if I believed in them, um, well, let's just say I didn't really want to do it. But then I had this, I had this encounter with him and uh, with an angel. It's just a long story. But um, basically the Lord kind of like forced me, for lack of a better term, to, to start making this movie. And so I just borrowed a camera from my from my school, I was, a, I was an English professor. I wasn't even like a film professor. And um, so I started making what I thought was a short film and uh, turned into a feature film. And um, it wound up being this movie called Finger of God, which uh, my entire marketing plan, when I finished, I remember looking at it being like, nobody's gonna watch this movie. Like it's the weirdest film. It doesn't look great. It doesn't sound great. It's, it's like nothing's ever really been done like it. So I just didn't think people would get it. And so I just put up on Amazon.com, and that was kind of like that was it. All right, I did what I, I did what the Lord asked me to do, and I went back to teaching. And um, in the meantime, the Lord just put his put his hand and his favor on this film, and it just wound up becoming this massive underground hit. 
And, um, and that kind of started my whole career of, of doing this stuff. And, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been about 12 years of learning who God really is. Um, I, I, I consider it less seeing what God does and more learning who he is. That's mm-hmm. really been the fun part for me is to kind of get to know his character um, and really get me out of my own kind of funk, my spiritual funk, and uh, getting me to a place where I actually like, I don't, yeah, where I don't, I don't just like, I don't believe in him. I love him and I like him and I trust him. So that's kind of like, it's a very short backstory of kind of where this all began. Well, and if you if you think about it in in so many ways, you've become a friend of God. Yes, that's 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 my that's my goal. That's you know, after Father of Lights, I really believe that's when I became kind of a friend of friends with with, with the Lord. And that's that's really his goal for every single person. And I really believe that each of your movies helps to bring people through that journey because I think as you were discovering who the father is, I think that in each journey we were discovering along with you because we were starting to see some of the things, but we didn't get to see all the backstory. Right. We didn't get to see the the divine encounters and, right. and connections. So that leads me to my question is, what was the craziest like encounter or connection that, that just like blew your mind of God's goodness? Uh, probably well, it's 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 always going to be what happened at the end of Father of Lights. So when the Lord got me into the Dome of the Rock in Israel, that was just that it was the biggest. It was a, it was a huge lesson for me, but it was also that was the moment where I feel like I became friends with the with the Lord because it was the first time in my life that my belief that He would do something outweighed my doubt that He wouldn't. If that makes sense. And, and that was also was really important for me because up until then I'd always been kind of like, um, how do I put it? I've always, I'd always been like relying on other people's prophetic words. I've been trying to get to a place where it's like, Lord, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Like just show me where to go and I'll go. And that was a moment where it was the end. I knew I was going to Israel to film the end of, of, of what I knew was going to be like probably one of the most important films I ever made. And I remember praying to the Lord two days before I left. And I said, Lord, I want to end this thing really, really well. And I want to make sure that I want to show the world like who you are. But I want to show them something impossible. I want to show them that you're real. And I even I even I remember even telling him, like, search my heart right now and know like where I'm coming from. Like, search me and know that like there is nothing in me that wants to be famous. There's nothing in me that wants to make a ton of money off this movie. I just want the world to really know who you are. Because at that point, I started. I was. I was beginning to understand who he really was, who the father was, and I just wanted the world to experience what I had been discovering for the last nine months. And um, and so I just said, let's let's go let's go to Israel and film something impossible. And when we went there, and I heard, I, I learned about the Dome of the Rock, and I had two days to figure out how to get in there. And it was, everybody was telling me it's totally impossible. You can't get in. It's you just can't do it. Um, and I remember, like, I, I told the Lord, this is where I want to go. And it wasn't the Lord telling me, I want you to go in. It was me deciding I want to go to show you off. And it was it was just a moment for me of learning of what it really means to partner with God creatively. To, to realize, like, he, he said yes, and he made it happen because it was something that was on my heart. It wasn't something that he wanted me to do, if that makes sense. And it was, a big, it was a big deal for me because it showed me what true friendship is. It showed me like true friendship isn't like just do what I say and shut up. You know what I mean? Like true friendship mm-hmm. is like, what, what do you want? Like, like, what do you want to do? And, and I've just discovered a lot of times when I've asked the Lord, like, what should I do? He'll come back with, I don't know, what do you want to do? And it's <laughs> kind of like, and you just, and you realize like, like his heart isn't to like control everybody. His heart is to be like, I just want to be with you. I want to like love you. And I want to like, that's what, that's what like a relationship is. It's like, I want to make you happy, you know? And it's like, as long as you're about like glorifying his son, like, man, he'll say yes to pretty much anything. You know what I mean? So, um, yes, to me, that was like the biggest thing. There's lots of other like little things that have just been, you know, blown my mind. But um, that's the, that's the one that really stands out, obviously, as, as the biggest. And that part of the movie in Father of Lights, like when when it's like, (laughs) 
I, I think the audience reaction, if you when you've gotten to see people who actually watch it, right. that when when you go to meet the guy who's in charge right. of like security, yeah, and you reveal, realize the big reveal. It's it's like, like, <laughs> every every we took it on tour to like thirty cities around the world, and it was like everywhere we went, it was over a thousand people at every event, and everybody standing ovation. They're just going crazy to see what God did. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing. Now, here's a little, if, if I can, since we have a little time, I can tell you a fun little story. Oh, absolutely. So for those of you who've seen Father of Lights, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But I will tell you this. So um, there's, there's, a, there's a man who is kind of getting us in. But, but when we got to the Dome of the Rock, which if you're not a Muslim, you're not allowed inside since like 2001, I think. And so we got there and they're like, well, okay, here's the deal. You have to go talk to the head of security at the dome. And that's when my heart sank because I was like, okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to like say, you know, I'm not here to like glorify the Lord. So um, they, they, they took me up and uh, I had to go through all the, I'm walking past guys with AK 47s everywhere. And uh, I'm just, I walk up three flights of stairs and I walk into this, this office of this man. And he had this, he's sitting behind this huge desk and he's like, I remember he was writing something on his desk and my interpreter was there and he kind of like said something to him. I don't know if you're speaking. And he said something to him and obviously he's telling him who I am. And he looks up at me and I'm like bracing myself. I'm like, well, I've got to like tell him what I'm doing. He's about to ask me what I want to do in the dome. Cause like my goal was to go in there and like start a revival. And he, I remember he looked at me, he didn't ask me any questions. He just looked at me, nodded his head, and then like went back to writing on his thing. And so and my interpreter said, okay, he said you can, he just gave you permission to go inside, shake his hand. So I walked up, I shook his hand and uh, that was it. That was, that, that was like what it took to get into the Dome of the Rock. It was unbelievable. And I, that's why I knew like, man, the Lord is just, he is all over this thing. So yeah, and then we walked, we just walked right into the Dome and it was, it was amazing. But that's something that's not in the movie. It's a lot of fun for me to tell people. It's like, God was God's hand was on it like the entire time. It was really cool. And that I think that's one of the things that you kind of see throughout your movies is you see God's hand. You really do see his finger. You see his fingerprint on everything that he did. Even the people that you used in each of the movies. You know, you brought some people back. You brought like, you know, of course. <laughs> You know, if you think about some of the fun ones, you know, it's like Todd White. It's like, right. oh my gosh, you right. know, it's like, and when when you were you were just at this um, conference that I was at, and you were like, he is exactly like that. I mean, he is exactly. just exactly like that. Yeah. yeah. And um, so you know, God has brought together all these incredible um, prophetic people. I mean, there's um, I think it's Ra Ravi. Ravi wow. is that the one who? Yeah who hears God yeah. uh, like audibly. Yeah. And so when I heard that, I was like, Oh, ooh, bucket list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm writing that one down because, and, and I think that's what your films really do is it, it gets yeah. people like, cool. We can do that. Yeah. Yes. Let's let's start. And I, I and it's funny because you wouldn't think that you can actually learn, but they're they're really great films that actually teach people how to encounter people and give a prophetic word. Because it's not like like some of it is just like, hey, you know, God loves you, Jesus loves you, oh, and you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, and these people are caught off guard, but you can see how quick and how receptive they are. Yeah. So has there ever been a time that that somebody has encountered somebody and it's just not been good? Um, I mean, there's occasionally people be like, no, I'm not interested. But for the most part, like people are polite. I mean, at the end of the day, that's really what it boils down to. It's like, hey, we're making a movie about God's love, how much he loves you. Like, can we talk to you for a couple minutes? And most people are like, unless they have somewhere to go, they're like, yeah, that's fine. And then God just hits them. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's it's um, it's pretty. It's not as like intense as people probably think it is. Uh, a lot of it, and and honestly, like, I, hes I, I hesitate to say this, but like, I don't make these to like teach people about God. I don't make these movies for anybody else other than myself. 
Like I just, I, cause like, I don't really like Christian movies. I'm not a huge fan of documentaries. Um, and I definitely would never in a million years watch a Christian documentary. So like if the Lord's asking me to make something, I'm like, I want to make it, I want to make something that I find really, really interesting. And when I go into these things, I have lots of questions. I just, I've seen, I've seen more than your average bear, but at the same time, the more I see, the more questions I have. And uh, because I've seen, I've seen the depths of, of like, of, of human depravity as much as I've seen like the, the joys of God's amazing, you know, amazing love for people. So if there's a lot, there's things that just constantly come up with me that like, I, I want to get to the bottom of. And uh, so that's really like when I, if you if you're taught by anything, it's because like I'm try, I'm kind of like the Lord's kind of teaching me, and I'm just taking you all for long for the ride. So that's kind of where where a lot of that comes from. It's there's never like an overarching like um, how do I put this? There's never an overarching like drive to make these movies where it's like I'm gonna like tell the world, I'm gonna show the world this. Like it's never been that. It's very. It's always comes from a place of like my own questions and my own like insecurities with God and my own like man I like people tell me you're good but I really need to see it for myself does that make sense absolutely and I think that we I, I think as believers because especially if we have a really good relationship with the father and also you know being a storyteller right. which is is something that if you're a good storyteller you want to tell good stories about a good, good father. Yeah. And so that's what I kind of feel like the, the, the beautiful parts about your movies is, is the compassion. Like, because I'd like to talk about furious love yeah. because furious, furious love, the way that you originally went out was <clears throat> let's make a movie where God and the devil have a showdown. Yeah. And what, what you found out is that man, his, his love just pulls down any kind of darkness. Right. Yeah. So Furious Love is an interesting movie because um, I remember I got the actually Heidi Baker pro prophesied that movie to me while I was actually still putting the, um, I was still putting Finger of God together and like a sequel was the furthest thing from my mind because there's like I didn't think anybody was going to watch this movie anyway. So why would I think about a sequel? Um, but I remember it was the last, it was our last thing that we were filming and we're in, um, gosh, where were we? it's Istanbul, Turkey. And, uh, so I remember I just finished filming and I was super like nervous cause I'm like, I gotta put this thing together. I don't know what I have. And so she started to pray for me and right. She was just, you know, she started off kind of like, okay, just God bless him. Like just your normal prayer. And then right in the middle of the prayer, she's like, oh, oh my goodness. Oh Lord. Like that's what she said, Heidi Baker, right? She's like, oh my God. And I'm like, I remember opening my eyes, looking at her like, what's going on, right? Because I'm new to all this prophetic stuff. And she's like, um, I don't know how else to tell you what I'm seeing, so I'm just gonna say what I see. She said, I see you filming the demonic, and I see you filming um, in the, like, like spiritual darkness. And I remember, I remember I said to her, is that good? Because <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. Like, am I going to go fall? Uh -huh. You know. Uh -huh. And then she says, "No." She, and then, then she like got really straight, and she says, "The Lord says that you have to go into the darkness to show the light." Oh, come on! And when she said that, it was just—it was something in my spirit just hit. And um, and so yeah, so basically, I remember traveling. I was traveling up to Toronto about two months after that to do my final interview with John and Carol or not. And uh, I was listening, I remember, I was listening to the Ragamuffin Gospel, I think is what it was, what it was and a book on tape. And uh, he said something about the furious love of God or something like mm -hmm. that. And I remember it just, the Lord just hit me. I'm like, I knew that was the name of the month that I And uh, And it just all kind of clicked at that moment. And I knew that I had to, I had to go to the darkest spiritual climates I could find to put God's love to the test. And I felt like I had God's permission to do that. So for me, that movie was really about, because it was really, again, everything comes from inside of me. So for me, I realized that I'd grown up in the church and I didn't really, when people said God loves you, it had stopped meaning anything to me, like for a long time. And, uh, and so I really like, I wanted to understand God's love again and actually see God's love. 
And so I said, the only way that I know how to do this is to basically like just go into dark places and just see, is there any limits? Are there any limits to his love? And because to me, it was like contrasting the light with the darkness was the only way you could see it. And uh, so, yes, that's kind of where that, that whole movie came from was just like my desire to like really understand for the first time God's love. And I remember when I was, even when I was putting the movie together, um, you know, I was kind of, I was editing it and, and how, how I edited that movie is I would work because again, when you make these movies, you kind of have, you know, the scenes, you know what you film. And so then it's just about like putting, putting it together in, in the best way possible. And so I'd work and rework and rework and I would, I would create these little scenes um, and I would do it until I cried. And once I, once I would like watch through what I created and I cried, I knew I could move on to the next scene. And so that's for a lot of people. That's like the most, it's definitely the most emotional movie. And I've, I've talked to lots of people who say that they, they literally start crying the moment the movie starts almost. And they literally cry the whole way through. And it was kind of designed that way because that's, that's what I did, putting it together. It was just it was just me and the Lord in the editing room. Just I was bawling my head off like every day. So, um, yeah, it was just uh, – and it, and it kind of – it re-showed me what God's love, like the, the weight of his love, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And what's – what was so beautiful about that movie, well, first of all, that was the last movie I think I actually watched because I was scared of it. <laughs> I was I, I was so I was so afraid that it was gonna show people possessed and it was yeah. gonna I was so afraid because yeah, I, I it is if it had a rating, it should it would be P two thirteen. So just keep that. Yeah. And, and so that was like I was like, okay, God is good. And and it took me a while because I think it might beginning walk, I was still, I still felt that the dark was, was going to be like much stronger and right. God just like changed that. So when I did see it, one of my favorite, favorite scenes in that movie is when um, I think it's Jason Westerfield was actually praying over this guy who was a, a, a Satanist a witch, yeah. and he was, yeah. And he was like a high priest and it was, and it was at some sort of a festival up in a Boston. A witchcraft festival, yeah. And what was so beautiful is when he said, I would like to pray for you. And he asked, who would you like to pray in? And he says, well, I, I use Jesus. Right. And um, he said, wait one second. And he pulled yeah. down his cap. Yeah. And that, to me, showed everything. Right. It just showed that there was something that started in that man's heart that shifted his bitterness towards God mm. that he just said, okay, because he was actually called, if, if, if you, if you see the movie, this man was actually called by God to do stuff for the Lord. Mm. And it, it just, we just have to be so careful with how we represent the father because we always want to represent him as good. And so to bring people back in, and that's, that's like the, that's the, the vein that runs through all of your movies is he's good because right. I never saw any scene where I thought, because you even, I, and I, I think it's in um, Holy Ghost where you had to go to a witch doctor yeah, I've, I've I've met a few. I've met a few. <laughs> but but I think it was in I think it was in Holy Ghost where you actually go to a witch doctor who two weeks earlier cursed and cursed a family. That was oh, um that's with Father of Lights. Oh, that is Father of Lights. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so so in Father of Lights, but you go to this village and I I believe because I asked you the question, what was the scariest thing you've yeah. ever done? <laughs> So can can you elaborate a little bit on the scariest thing that you've yeah, ever so, um, been a part of? Yeah, so I went to I went to we were in India and I was filming with Ravi and uh, and the Lord had kind of given him the address of this very, very famous witch doctor. And uh, he was famous because he had actually just been on like national like the national news in India because he had I think it was two months before we got there. He had, he had basically gone to uh, some missionaries like their house and cursed them. And, um, and within three days, the missionaries died and, and they brought a bunch of like Christians together. Everyone was trying to pray to break the curse and, and they still died. I, I don't quite know where to put that in my theology, but 
Um, all I know is that this dude was kind of a big deal. And uh, I remember Robbie telling me when he said, like, this is this is something the Lord has he's given it to me, but he has not told me that we should go. He's just given me an address. And he's and I remember him saying, like, you know, you have a family. I don't want to like I'm willing to die, but you're in charge of the crew and all this other stuff. So he made me make the decision. And uh, so I really wrestled with it. Um but then just got, just got the, 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 the green light from the Lord. And um, I was more terrified than I've ever been in my life. And I remember the night before we were, we were to go there, I, I woke up at like three or four o'clock in the morning. And I just, and the spirit of fear was on me. And I just, I was, I've, I was like almost about to throw up. I was so scared. And uh, it was just, it was totally demonic. It was just horrible, horrible. And, um, and then I, I somehow managed to get back to sleep. And then the next, you know, the next day I'm just so terrified of what we're doing. And so I remember we showed up and I'm like, here we go, <laughs> you know, and uh, we went, we went straight to his front door and uh, I kept waiting for him to come out and just, I, I, I remember waiting for like just fireworks to start and uh, he wouldn't come out of his house. And I don't, I don't know what they're saying to each other. They're talking a different language. I'm just filming as much as I can. And I remember looking into his little hut and he was way in the back corner of his hut. He was just, he was kind of in the fetal position. He's like rocking back and forth like this. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And so I remember I turned around, it's actually in the movie. I turned to Robbie, I'm like, what's going on? And he says, well, obviously he's afraid of us now. And, uh, and it was at that moment that I realized like all my fear lifted. I was like, oh, we won. Like we didn't do anything. And, and we found out later, the Lord, had, the Lord had actually stripped him of all of his powers like hours before we had shown up. That's why he was so, he knew we were coming because the demons told him. And, um, and that's why he was in his, in his hut and he wouldn't come see us because he was so terrified because he, all of his power was gone. And um, I think like within two or three days, he disappeared and nobody's ever seen him again. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, sometimes people will, will concentrate on like these, you know, tomorrow's Halloween. Right. So, <laughs> you know, and people are, you know, people concentrate on these things. And I'm not saying that, that there isn't a validity to the, to what they believe because, you know, darkness is real. Like, you know, yeah. this stuff is real. It's, it's no joke. And your, your films show that, you know, but it also shows the power of God in such a greater and mightier way. And it right. shows that if, if God can strip him of his power, that yeah. God stripped him of his power. Come on. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people need to need to remember, like I remember growing up, I mean, I grew up in a fairly conservative home and, and the way things were explained to me is God and the devil were like, even, they were even even fighting partners, right? Like, who knows who's going to? We know the Lord's going to win, but man, it's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough fight. At the end of the day, the devil's an angel. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's just a fallen angel. Like, he hasn't created anything. He's like, he's a created being. Like, the Lord could. It's so. I feel like Christians a lot of times we give way too much credit to the devil. We give him way too much. Like, we give him too much power out of all fear. When in reality, it's just like, dude, the Lord's bound the strong man. We can walk into his house, and, you know, like, so, you know, Halloween is not, a, it doesn't need to be a fearful thing. I'm like, go out and bless your neighbors. You know what I mean? Go, go talk to people. Like, don't hide in your house out of fear. Like, get out That's there. Right. So, I mean, yeah, anyway, don't get me on my soapbox. We'll get, we'll get through. No, well, no, no, no. I'm so glad that you bring that up because that has been on my heart like so much because we are called to be the light that's what we're called to do we're not supposed to be hiding our light we're supposed to so we should be and, I, and if you're listening and you, you have kids go back out and go get the biggest candy bars that you can get and every single kid that comes in you put that big candy bar in and say that is from jesus because he loves exactly. you come on he loves you. He loves you. what's the, i mean i lived in i grew up in a house where everywhere we close the doors and we shut off the lights. <laughs> we are not participating in the devil's holiday. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why don't we just participate in the devil's holiday 
Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's bring Jesus into it. And see exactly. Because and it's and it's one of those things that I really believe that it's one of the most missed evangelical um, or evangelistic opportunities. The time in the entire year where the entire neighborhood goes outside and, and meets people. Meets each That's other. right. And the Christians are like, we're, we're shutting off our lights. Don't come to our door. Like, <laughs> Well, and, and that, but see, that's the whole thing is that if you don't know who your daddy is and if you don't know how big God is, right. like, I, I, it's like, can you imagine like Jesus would be like, he'd be playing music. He'd be dancing. He'd be giving candy, having like drinks and stuff. He'd yeah. be having a party because he, he conquered it. He conquered right. devil, the right. devil. He he's fallen and it's done. So it's like, we, we kind of have to come into this place where we start to trust the Holy Spirit and, and to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that you you don't have to be like, um, we, we have to use wisdom in everything that we do. And if everything that we're doing is being done in love, then I believe that love covers a multitude of sins. Right. How right. about that? So, but, but now, what I said about being led by the Holy Spirit kind of brings me into your movie, Holy Ghost, which is one that's that was a great and fun movie because like the Holy Spirit drove the whole movie. It yeah. wasn't like you you had a plan. Like you kind of had an don't. idea. <laughs> but it was like, OK, Lord, here, this is your movie. Yeah. You do with it what you want. Right. Yeah. So let me give you a little backstory of how that movie came about. Um, so I, I thought after father of lights, I was done. Like, I wasn't going to make these movies, these movies anymore. I was going to do something else. And, um, and so I remember I was at, uh, I, I was at the, a Jesus culture event in New York and, um, Bill Johnson was actually, he was, he was speaking and I was just like, and you know, I was kind of over in like the section where they put like, um, people that who knew Jesus culture. So we're like over in the VIP section. And uh, I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden, like the Holy Spirit hits me. I remember, the, I remember uh, Bill said something. He said the word Holy Spirit for some reason, and just every, like electricity came on me, and my, I got these butterflies in my stomach. And I'm like, oh, my. like I was like, Lord, like seriously, like you think I, I got to make a movie about the Holy Spirit now? Like I thought I was done. And so I remember talking to Bill afterwards. I'm like, man, when you were talking, the Lord came on me, and I think I'm supposed to make a movie about the Holy Spirit. And if, if you've ever met Bill, he's like the most chill dude ever. And I remember him, like I was talking to him and he got really rigid like this. And he, and he put his hand up. He's like, look, look at my arm. And his hair was standing on end. He's like, my, my hair is on end. He's like, the Holy Spirit is on this. You have to make that movie. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I remember going to the Lord. And I was like, all right, I know you want me to make a movie about the Holy Spirit. But like, you know, one, I didn't really understand the Holy Spirit. I didn't. I was kind of. I was kind of freaked out by him because he was so like. I just didn't understand him, and I said, "I'll I'll make this movie under one condition. I want you to be the director because it makes no sense for somebody who doesn't really understand the Holy Spirit to make a movie about the Holy Spirit." So I said, "You do it. You just show me where to go." And so that's when it, that's where it kind of came about this whole idea of like, I want to try to make the first film ever that is completely directed by the Holy Spirit. And uh, so what that looks like is I just, cause in the past I would make films and I'd always go and try to hook up with like a ministry or a minister that was working somewhere that, that was doing something in the, in the area that I was going. So I at least have some kind of backup plan, if that makes sense. And then, you know, in the midst of, we, we film what they're doing and then we would go out maybe a day or two and film just God doing some stuff. If God does anything, that's wonderful. So this was the first movie where it's like, we're not going to meet any ministries. We're just going to go where the Lord tells me to go. I'll bring a couple of friends and we'll have to figure out why he sent us there when we get there. So I remember, you know, getting to Monaco and, you know, we get off the train. Everybody's looking at me like, what do we do? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I think the Lord gave me a picture of a boat. So I think we need to try to get a boat, you know? And it was like, and it was just, this became this, Every day was an adventure to figure out why did the Lord send us here? And for me, it was super, super stressful because I'm like, I don't know if I'm hearing the Lord correctly. You know what I mean? Like, you think you are. It's not like I'm walking in confidently being like, yes, like we're definitely supposed to go here. Um, and we're definitely supposed to do this. Like, I'm just like, there are little small whispers that you think you hear. 
And uh, I remember when I finished filming, because Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost Reborn, were, they were both shot at the same time. Um, I shot both movies together. And uh, I remember when I, when, I, when I finally was able to say, that's a wrap, we were in South Africa. And I burst into tears. It's actually on the deluxe edition. Um, you can actually see the moment, the very vulnerable moment, where I just burst into tears. I wept uncontrollably for about 10 or 15 minutes. Because it was like the stress of it for nine months was just overwhelming. And I remember just crying. And I was so, it was just tears of joy of like, Lord, we did it. We did it. We did it. I quit, can't believe what we've done together, but we did it. And uh, it was just, it was just one of the best, worst moments of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of, yeah. There's lots of stories in Holy Ghost movie born. But. And, and, but see that, that's the fun part about when, when you partner with God, because like when, when I started touched by prayer, um, I, you know, I didn't know how to do it. I just, my husband, it was funny because I went to a voice of the prophet and Larry Randolph was speaking and he said, there are people here who haven't been released into their destinies. And he said, so I want to release you into your destiny. So if you have something you want to do, you stand up. Okay. So I stood up and he looked at me and he goes, what's your name? And I said, my name's Lisa. And he said, Lisa, he goes, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be on TV. And he said, be more specific. I went, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, I said, I want to have a talk show. And he said, Lisa, we released you into your talk show. So that was, that was in May of 2013. Ooh. And then um, in October of 2013, my husband started to talk to me and he started saying, I think we're supposed to do an internet radio show. I go, what? Ooh. He goes, yeah, we were, I think you're supposed to do an internet radio show. I go about what? He goes, what you do because at the time I was working at a cosmetic counter and I was having all these incredible encounters with God. People were getting healed. I had words of wisdom, words of knowledge. I mean, we had gold dust, we had angel feathers, we had all these manifestation oh. at like my cosmetic counter. And I would come home and tell my stories. And he's like, this needs to be shared. So when I, I started to pray about it and I said, Lord, I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to let you do it. And so from the beginning of, of doing the show i just pray in the holy spirit and the holy spirit tells me what to do i don't have notes i don't have anything so when holy ghost came out i was like oh hey i can totally relate to this because it's it's kind of you know you want to in some ways be prepared but what the holy spirit does and how he does it it's so much bigger than what you could ever imagine. I mean, because that one boat incident, yeah. like the, the whole story about it, and but the beautiful part about each story that happened in Holy Ghost and in Holy Ghost Reborn is that the way that it affected the people. I mean, yeah. how you got connected was amazing, but it shows the depth, the depths and, and the, the leaps that God will do right. to get a child. Right. That's the thing. The Lord doesn't care. Like we love the story that leads it. We love all the connections. We love that stuff because it's like, ah, oh, God is real, right? It shows us God is real, and like it can't be all be coincidence. But all the Lord cares about is getting his kid. That's all he really cares about. Is he wants to like, I've got my eye on you, and I'm coming after you, and I'm gonna spend the rest of your life coming after you. And, you know, and it's like, to me, that's the, that's, that's the point of it all is like, he wants all of us, you know, and he's not going to be happy with us just roaming through life, you know, miserable. Like he wants his kids back. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the beauty that we, that your movies share is the relentless pursuit that God has for his kids. Yeah. Like even, even the witch doctor, yeah. let's be real. Like yeah. seriously, the, the witch doctor was not supposed to be a witch doctor. That's not, that wasn't the best that God had for him. Right. He had something better for him in, in all of these places. And um, I think it was, I'm trying to think if it was, I'm not sure if it was uh, Holy Ghost or Holy Ghost Reborn, where the um, the singer who was singing and going through the streets and then going oh, into yeah. the, into the temple in, <laughs> 
in India, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're like, they're worshiping all these gods and he's just like singing yeah. and, and they're dancing and, and people are praying and, and they're like, do, do, do you feel that? And they're like, oh yes, I feel that. And they're like, right. that's God. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny, what's funny, the backstory of that. So the Lord showed me to go to, to go to India. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to take Jake Hamilton, the guy who you're talking about. Okay. And so I, I asked Jake, I'm like, Jake, I, I think we're supposed to go to this place called Varanasi in India, which is the birthplace of Hinduism and of uh, Buddhism. And you know, I'm like, but it is, it's a little dangerous, right? And so he, you know, he did not want to go at all. And so I remember we hooked up together in, uh, we were both in Denver, Colorado at the same time at, at the same church. And, and uh, Heidi Baker was speaking, was friends of both of ours. And she didn't know anything that was going on between us. And Jake had come and he was going to tell me that weekend that he was not going to film with me. And uh, so we're in, uh, we're, we're, but it was, we had to go through the service first. And so Heidi was speaking and she's like, right in the middle of the service, she's like, the Lord says, India, somebody here does, doesn't want to go to India. And the Lord is saying, go to India. You have to go to India. And Jake's like looking at his wife. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and so I didn't know anything. I was just like, yeah, of course Jake's going to go. He's like, I'm, I'm going to force Jake to go. Mm -hmm. And so he came up to me afterwards. He's like, dude, you have no idea. So we went there and the Lord showed me very clearly that we're supposed to go down to um, the Ganges River, which is holy to, to Hindus. And um, and just worship. And the Lord said, do not preach, just worship and mm -hmm. watch what I do. And I was like, okay, right. That's what I heard. And so I remember we got off the plane and there was a ministry there that we hooked up with that, that was kind of like taking us around and everything. And so I, I had already talked to them. I'd emailed them. This is what we want to go do. And so I was literally just off the plane and we're driving to our hotel. And he's like, so what do you guys want to do? I'm like, well, I kind of emailed you, right? Like I thought, I thought you guys kind of knew what I wanted to do. He's like, yeah, I got your email, but seriously, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I want to do what I said. What do you want to do? He says, okay, here's the deal. You can't go down. You can't do what you want to do. It's not possible. He's like, if you, there's one of three things is going to happen if you do what you're going to do, what you want to do. Best case scenario is you get beat up. Second best scenario is they're going to beat you up. And they're going to take all of your equipment, break it, and throw it in the Ganges. Worst case scenario is they're going to kill all of you and chop up your body, bodies and throw it in the Ganges because they've been known to do that. This is like hardcore, hardcore. He's like, here's, what, here's what, we, what we think you should do. We can take you out into the villages outside the city, and there you can do anything you want. You can preach, you can sing, you can worship, whatever you want. You can do it out there because the, because the, the militants aren't out there. And I'm like, dude, I, I hear you, but the Lord has told me. He told me what to do. So we just, we're going to go do it. And so that's when he realized that this American was insane. And uh, so that night, he didn't tell me this, that night he went down to Varanasi and he met with the only person that he knew in the city uh, who was, who was a, a Hindu priest named um, Ramesh. And, he's, and he paid Ramesh the equivalent of 20 US dollars to say, hey, the, I have these crazy Americans, they're coming down, they're gonna, they're gonna just start singing tomorrow morning. Can you just come and show up? Because Ramesh was kind of a big deal in the area. And he's like, just be there. And he was he was banking on Ramesh's presence, like helping it so that people don't start a riot, right? That was his whole. That was all. He never told us any of this stuff. So we get down there. Jake starts. If you've watched the movie, you see what happens. Jake starts to play worship, and Ramesh falls in love with us. Like, and he even admits, like, I've never felt what I feel when Jake sings. And, uh, and so he took us, he winds up taking us to his temple. Like, and, you know, we, we're, we're doing exactly what the Lord showed me, which is I saw us singing worship on, the, on, the, on the, the banks of the Ganges in front of a temple. And that's exactly, he takes us to the temple, like the, like the Holy of Holies in, in the place where Hinduism started. And he's like, sing your song, sing your, sing your amazing grace song. And like with permission from the from the high priest, she just sings Amazing Grace. And it was just it's the coolest thing ever. And and I remember we were walking through the streets and worship is happening. And we didn't realize how big of a deal it was until afterwards when, when our kind of handlers were talking to us. 
And they said, you don't understand. We walk through, we prayer walk through these streets every day and we get beaten. Like we don't, we don't say a word about Jesus and they, they pick up in the spirit what we're doing. And people throw rocks at us. They throw sticks at us. They're yelling at us. They punch us. You guys just walked through the oldest city in the world, the most demonic city in the world and praising Jesus openly. And people were like celebrating you and they were like joining you. And to them, it was so cool. It was great to be able to see like, you know, to be able to like show the world this thing. But what was even more amazing was to watch these Christians who were hiding in fear to realize like our God could do anything. Mm -hmm. And it just gave them this new boldness that they never knew that they had. And it was just like, we can do anything now, you know? And uh, it was just, uh, it was one of those things, one of those moments where it's like, man, you know, I, I don't know. It was just, it was one of the, one of my favorite things ever, just because it was just the Lord, you know, it was just the Lord gave me this little thing. This is just, and he just said, watch what I do. That's all he told me. And um, uh, over two days, he did an amazing thing. And just that, worship, just worship. and you know what, sometimes I think that we, we get so crazy about certain things that we're, God doesn't need us to like, be yakking all the time. Sometimes we just, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, no, no, no. Do what I tell you to do. Do yeah. what it's because, because of the frequency, because of the tone, because of whatever it is, because he, he has reasons right. sometimes for doing what he does. And I, I just, it just blows my mind because I, I can go through story after story from from finger of God to finger of God to 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 all to the Holy Ghost to, to the two Holy Ghost movies to Father of Lights. You can you can just see it's like that obedience that that just starts to change because each person who interacts with with the different um, people, you know, it's so personal. Like nothing was the same. Nothing. It wasn't cookie cutter. For right. some, you know, um, it was when Jamie Galloway and, and Will Hart they were they were in um, Utah, Salt Pop, City. right? Salt City, yep. In Salt Lake City, and so they and they were like praying over people, and you know, and they were just you know putting their hands right. on top of somebody, and they were like, and you know, and Jamie Galloway's like double it. And, and he's like, whoa, you know, it's only Jamie Kelly gonna double it, boom. Double and, it. and I was watching it. I was watching it in my bed and I was like, whoa. And the Lord said, you can do that. I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, you can do that. And so like, take those movies guys, take those movies and watch them because everything that they're doing, we can do It's God is God and yeah. he just uses he uses his children just yeah. to show what he can do. But yeah. yeah, and I think it's important to realize too that the people that I'm ministering with, yeah, like, okay, people may look at them and they're like, the people I'm filming, like, they're just, they're special, um, they're professionals. Like, look, these are my friends and I hang out, mm -hmm. we hang out, and they're like, they're idiots. Okay? <laughs> like, they're just, like we, we hang out and like we don't sit there and we don't fast and pray all the time. We tell fart jokes. <laughs> you know, like it's just like we're just normal people and they have they have tons of issues and you know we, we like we screw things up all the time and it's like at the end of the day, it's just the only reason they're seeing stuff and maybe you're not is because they're like acting in obedience. Because they're simply saying, Okay, you know what? Like I got nothing to offer you today, but Jesus is real. So let me show them to you. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, kinda, that's kind of what it boils down to. And so it's like, I, you know, I live to kind of break these kind of like, I don't know, these weird things that people have, these thoughts that they have that like you have to get yourself totally perfect, totally good. You got to be a super good spiritual place to like, to, to be able to do anything for the Lord. It's like, man, the Lord's just, all he wants is a yes. And he will use like any broken vessel that he can use, you know what I mean? But the problem is most broken vessels are just like, I'm too broken to use. Mm. He's like, I can use anything, trust me, right? Yeah, and and I think that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, you, you run the gamut in your movies, you know, from from someone who, you know, like Heidi Baker, you know, right. and, and you hear her testimony, and then you, you see Will Hart ministering to the, um, to that, to, to the man, man, woman, 
I don't know what they yeah, called yeah, him. Uh, lady boy. Lady boy, you yeah. know, and, and he so tender and so loving and so sweet. And it's like, like I said in the beginning of our, our interview, it's like these different facets of the diamond of God, you know, these different parts of him that sparkle out at different places. And as the light hits in just the right, uh, something shoots off and it's like, and it's this beautiful imagery that he, he never becomes judgmental. I mean, even the guy back in Utah, there was a, a guy who was like condemning the Mormons. He's like right. shouting. He's from England somewhere. And yeah. he's like shouting and he's like yelling at him. He's doing all these crazy things. And they're like, dude, I know that this is, you know, and, and I think that even happened. And I think it was Father of Lights where you yeah. were with Doug Addison and you were out on the boardwalk. Yeah. Um, out in uh, California and you're you're walking down the boardwalk and there are all these Christians. And there's a part in the film where you actually say, I had to remind myself that we're on the same side. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, I had to remind myself that we are on the same team. We are on the same side. And it's just because they haven't encountered the father right. in, in that way. Right. They, they just don't know their dad. That's it. They don't know their dad. They don't know our dad. Our dad. Right? I like that. They, they, yes. They've heard, they've heard about him. They think they know about him. They've read about him, but they don't really know who he is. And I just, you know, what, where I've seen the Lord do the most stuff, it's when, it's when, you know, my friends and I, we, we treat people like actual human beings. And I think a lot of Christians, especially a lot of charismatics, they get it wrong when they think like, I want to see God do amazing things as opposed to like, I see you and God loves you. Right. Like I just had this happen. I was literally, I was just in Dallas for a figure of God two showing. And uh, one of my favorite things I love to go to, when I go to the big cities, I love to just walk around the city and just kind of get to get the feel of it. And I was just by myself and I'm walking around. And of course, like there's a million homeless people everywhere. And this homeless guy sitting there and he comes up and he's, He's like, hey, can can you need money? I'm like, bro, I don't I don't have cash, but what do you need? And he's like, I just want some, I just want some chips. I'm like, dude, I'll get you some chips. Come on, let's go. And so we just start walking. I'm just like, and like, I'm just talking to him, right? And I'm just like, tell me your name. Tell me who you're, who you are, who you're from. And I'm like, there's no intention. I'm not gonna get you. I'm not gonna go after getting you saved. I'm just, you know, I'm just like, you're a human being, and like, I just want to like talk to you. And I remember him telling me, he's like, and it was so funny because I'm like, I'll get you some. And then he wanted Dr. Pepper. I'm like, I'll get you some Dr. Pepper. He's like, could you get me a water? I'm like, yeah, I'll be happy to get you a water. And he says, well, actually, since you're getting me all that, could you maybe get me some cigarettes? I'm like, bro, I've never bought cigarettes in my life. You may have to walk me through it, but I'll do it. And he's like, well, could you get me two? Because that'll last a while. And I'm like, I'll get you two. And so we get there and I go in there and I buy all this, all this stuff for him. I, walk, I give it to him and he's, and he's just really happy. And I and he was wearing sunglasses the whole time. And then like, before I left, I said, "Bro, just take your sunglasses." Off. And he told me, "I'm like, just look at me." And he looked at me and I said, "I want you to understand something. Like, Jesus really loves you. And the only reason I'm doing this is because He loves you, and that means I love you. Because you're worth it." And he just burst into tears. I mean, it's all they want. They just want to be loved. They just want somebody to like see them. You know what I mean? And, yeah. I think, and it, and it, and it, the homeless person is like the extreme. And I just realized through just through 12 years of doing this, everybody we encounter just wants to be seen. Like they could be the coolest, you know, Brian Head Welch rock star. Like, but like at the end of the day, Lenny Kravitz, they just want to be seen, right? Like they just want to like be known and they want to know that God actually knows their name. And, uh, and I think when, when that's what you bring to the table, like, man, the Lord's going to show up on everything that you do because it's like there's a purity there. Does that make sense? And I Absolutely. think like, a lot of people do stuff and it's not, and it's out of a not pure place. It's out of a place of like, I want to see God do stuff. I want to see, I, I just want, I want a story to tell. And in reality, it's like, oh man, just, just see somebody. Do you mean, I don't know. I, Again, I'm getting carried away, but no, uh, but I think, but Darren, I think that's what what makes you so. Well, I, I I'm sorry. I, that's what makes you so beautiful. Like your heart is to really is to be the love. You know, Sean Sean Bowles 
who talks about like, you love well. He said that he called my daughter out like at the conference. He called her out but and he said that she loves so well. That's what he said to her. And it rocked me because she's not like me. She's not walking like me. She's not reading her Bible. She's not praying in tongues. She's not doing anything, but her heart, her heart loves well. Right. And so I thought about that and I said, well, if she loves well and she doesn't know Jesus the way that I know Jesus, she doesn't know the father the way that I know the father, I have to love better. So I had to like take a lot of the stuff that was holding me back and I had to just shut it down and push it off and just say, daddy, teach, give me your heart and teach me how to love well. Teach yeah. me how to be love. Yeah. And I, no, I think that's yeah. what you do. Well, thank you. I mean, I try. <laughs> we try. Well, no, I, I think you I just, do. I've, I've heard you speak and I, and, I, and I see your heart in everything that you put your hand to. Well, thank you. I just feel like, yeah. See, and I know there's a book in me coming that it's all because I need to write. The, to me, the, the cry of my heart is for Christians to get to a place where they, where they understand and are comfortable to realize that everybody that they encounter, including people in their own family, are on a journey. Mm -hmm. And we have to let people have their journey. And we have to love them in the midst of their journey and not feel like we have to, we have to get them, okay, you're, you're not on the right path. You have to get over here. But it's like, man, if you pull them over too fast, like they're, it's, not, it's gonna be a fake journey, you know? And there's just, you know, and that's what I love about the Lord. Like he, true love, like lets people make their own decisions. Um, mm -hmm. God, God loves us despite our poor decisions. And it's and that's why, you know, Romans 2, 4, the kindness of God leads man to repentance, right? Like it's his kindness that like when I'm bumping into walls and I'm making really stupid decisions and I, and I, and I get to the point where I realize, man, God still loves me and is still going to use me despite like the stupid thing that I did. Like, I never want to do that thing again. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's what leads me to, like, this place of, like, Lord, I'm an idiot. I'm so sorry. Like, you know, let's get this thing. Let's walk straight, you know? And I just feel like, man, if we could just let people have their journey. And it's hard. The hardest is when the, the closer they are to you, the harder it is, right? Um, but, yeah, there's something, there's something there about the journey that we just – Christians are not good at letting people have their own journey walk. Mm. I, I think that is one of the most profound things I've heard in a very long time. And and I do want to, since you brought up books, I do want to also talk about that you are also a author of two books. One yeah. is Filming God. Three of them. Yeah. Three. I don't have the third one. I only have the two. Uh, there's a new one just came out last year called God Adventure. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay, yep. so there's Filming God, yep. uh, A Journey from Skepticism to Faith, and then my favorite, which is Finding God in the Bible. It, my favorite. It's, it is funny. It is, it's, a it's a quick and fun read. It's really fun because if you haven't, <laughs> I think if you really didn't understand God, I think you get a better understanding after reading this book. Yeah. But what was so great about this book is that there is a story behind it. So do you want to share? Do you want to share your yeah, story? Yeah. Two things. One, I wrote that book for people who hate Christian books because I hate Christian books. So I wanted to write one that, I, again, I want to read. Something that's fun, funny, and that has got some depth to it. But basically, I remember um, that I was, wasn't even thinking about writing a book. I was dropping my kid. I was picking my kids up from Awana. If you guys maybe know, like, Awana. It's like a church, like, thing for, for like, young kids. And so I, but I got there early. It was about 15 minutes early. And I was just sitting in the church, and the Lord said, pull out your iPad. Because I take my iPad everywhere. I was like, all right. And so then I heard him just say, start, like, now start typing. I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to type? But again, I, I know the voice of the Lord at this point. So I just started typing. And I remember typing the words, I don't know what to. And then immediately, it was chapter one. And it was like three sentences of what chapter one is about. Chapter two. And it, like the title of the title of the chapter Three sentences of what that was about. And ha and like I remember I went through it, it gave me 10 chapters. And half the stuff that I was writing, I'm like, I'd never even thought of before. Like, I never thought of the story of Gideon before. Like, I never thought of that as like friendship with God thing. 
And he just, but he gave me this like little like, like download insights. And I remember at, when I finished, he just said, now go back and read the stories with me and let's write this book together. And so that's where, that's where finding out in the Bible came from. And it was basically the story about, about what it means to be friends with God. And it was interesting. I looked back at everything that he gave me. It was everything in the Bible that made me afraid of him growing up. It was all the stories that were really hard stories that like, I didn't understand Abraham. Why do you ask Abraham to, how was it loving the show that, for Abraham to kill his son for you? Like, how is that? Like that's twisted. Right. And there's just like, I, I saw how he treated Moses. I'm like, man, he makes one mistake. All your friends, they make one mistake and they're out. And it was just like, I, it just, it bothered me. And so it made, got me to a place where like, I don't want you to get too close to me because you become very, very dangerous and very demanding when you get really close to people. And so he just walked me through this thing. And, and, he, and instead of looking at it through the lens of like an acquaintance of God, he, he, he showed me these stories through the lens of a, of a friend of God and uh, totally, totally changed how I saw all these things. So to this day, it's my absolute favorite thing that I've ever created, movie, book, whatever. Um, it's, the, it's the purest kind of like heart of, of what the Lord has shown me in all of this stuff. So I'm glad you brought it up. That's my favorite. Well, and I also think that because you are a friend of God, I think that in order to become a friend, you have to spend time. And so what a good friend does is they sit down with you and they start to tell you who they are. Right. And so that's what I felt in finding God in the Bible is like it was it was a great way for God to just like pull up a chair next to me. And because as I read through it, I was like, oh, because. I think like for me, I I never had a problem with Father God. I mean, I, I just, I wasn't afraid of him. I mean, I, I always, you know, I honored and respected who he was, but I, but I didn't have the daughter mentality with him until after, like I started to really like read your book, see the movies, you know, read the shack. And like, that's when I started to, to see him as a, a good father. So yeah. like when I, I sing, when I, not that I sing publicly, but when I worship <laughs> right. and, um, and I sing um, good, good father, like it really, it really is how I see him that he's yeah. good. And so when well, you start to see him that way, I think it changes everything. Yeah. And I think everybody, you know, I, what I like to remind everybody is everybody loves Jesus. Every <laughs> in a million years would you be like, yeah, I got a serious issue with Jesus, right? Nobody says that, but like so many people are like, man, I love Jesus, but the Father freaks me out, right? Because they think Old Testament, they think this, and Jesus said, look, guys, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and it's like he is Jesus is the exact representation of who the Father is. And, you know, I love to tell people, if you love Jesus, man, you're going to love his old man because his old man is like everything that Jesus did. And so for me, that and that was really the, the turning point for me to realize that Jesus and the Father are the same. And, man, there's nothing to be afraid of there. Nothing at all. He's a no. dad. It's just yeah. our dad. You know, a lot of our dads stink. So it's like we have that to deal with. But well, uh, I had a great dad growing up, and I still had serious issues with him. So. Yeah. So, and, um, and I do, I do want to talk about what you have upcoming just so that we can kind of keep it on people's radar yep. because you're always doing something. I mean, you are like, I mean, just to even how you transitioned because you did a, a, a television show, two of them. Uh, which, uh, two of them, right? For crazy, uh, crazy adventures with God. Adventures Is that right? With God adventures with God. Yeah. Yes. And so that was, and, it was so you you've gone TV, you've done movies, you've done books. There's a new movie coming out, which you're excited about, correct? Yeah, so uh, we're actually on tour with it right now, Finger of God Two, which is super awesome. Uh, it's directed by a good friend of mine named Will Hacker, and I produced the whole thing and, and just walked him through the whole journey. Um, and it's amazing. It's so I'm so proud of him. Uh, really, I think it really again just shows just shows more of the father's heart for people, but that's coming out. That'll be released um, to the whole world December 4th when it will be like available everywhere. 
Uh, and then next year, I will start making my next movie and probably the last of these kind of God adventure films. Uh, it's called The God Man, and it's all about Jesus. And uh, I figure I've talked about the Father and the Holy Spirit. So let's end this bad boy with uh, with Jesus. And I'm, I've never been more excited about the movie than this one. So I'll start from um. that Absolutely. And um, I was I was so lucky that I got to see Finger of God, too. I just saw it in um, October. Uh, we were at a, a Dennis Renier had a conference called John 151, and it was incredible. But I got to see. And let me just tell you, if you've seen Finger of God, you'll actually see feel that same kind of flow in Finger of God, too. It, even though it was done um, directed by um, another person, it still has your flow to it because it and it just kind of goes through this whole thing. And it's beautiful. Bring tissues. Just yeah. let me you know. Yeah. Bring <laughs> tissues because yeah. you'll be you're going to be crying. I'm just just letting you know that. So you can say, oh, Lisa told me to bring tissues. Uh, so I'm like, bringing tissues. I've cried every time. It's been a time. So, yeah. And it's so beautiful. Yeah. And it's and it just I think that what what I get out of everything that that you've done and you've produced, Aaron, what I what I truly truly get is your just love for the father, love for the body, love love for the kids, love for his kids. Yeah, that's what I I feel and see in everything that you have put your hand to, and I I just it just it it gets me excited to to do more things for the kingdom because I've seen how you can impact. So I'm like, here I am, Lord sent me because it's, if you've changed my life so dramatically, oh. I can't even imagine how many people, your films, your books have and television show have impacted the world. That's amazing. Thanks so much. This has um, been such an honor and thank you so much for spending time here on Touch by Prayer. My pleasure. It's been great. Thank you so much. This was really fun. And so thank you guys for tuning in to Touch by Prayer. I hope this has blessed you. Please share this with your friends. Remember to go and check out Darren Wilson at his website, wpfilms.com. You can get his books. If you want to support him, buy his movies. Guess what? Don't just buy one, buy two. No, 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 don't do that. Buy three, send it out as gifts. They make great Christmas gifts. Christmas is just around the corner. Guess what? They also make great Valentine gifts for somebody who you love. We say that we love the world. Go get yourself some movies and start sending them. Put them into a barrel, into a nice little uh, bow and start handing them out because these movies are game changers. They changed me. You see me, you see what I do every week, right? It has changed me and it's because of that movie, Finger of God, that I started to pray for the sick. I started to see people getting healed. I, I knew about deliverance. I understood about prophecy. I understood about word of knowledge. But more importantly, I learned about a good, good father who will go to any length to come and get a kid and will rescue them and will love on them and will tell them that I am here for you and I will never leave you. So there you go. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to Touch by Prayer. Remember, go to WP Films, check out all the, of uh, Darren's stuff. Get his book also. If you want a great book, Finding God in the Bible, I am telling you, it is such a great read. You're going to love it. And so share it with your friends. So thank you guys so much. Just remember to go out and touch someone. Good night. Good night.